Yo, what's up? This is your boy, Derry Branch here for St. Discussions on Strike 7 Sports. In today's video, I just want to talk about a um, recent article that was published by former New Orleans Saints general manager, uh, Randy Mueller, who was here briefly uh, with the team, uh, was the guy that, you know, was a part of the Hazlitt, Hazlitt regime. Back in the day, for all the old heads that remember um, how that went down, um, hired Jim Haslett, made the playoffs in the 2000 with Ricky Williams and uh, Jeff Blake and uh, Willie Jackson, uh, Leroy Glover, that whole crew that was uh, part of that team, Joe Horn. Yeah, those guys, that regime. And he's been, uh, Randy Mueller has been ever since leaving the uh, National Football League as an, a league a team executive. He has, you know, sir, worked in the media recent, well, over the years. Uh, I believe he was with the 33rd, third, the 33rd team at one point. Now he's part of the Athletic. And there's been a series that has been going on lately on the Athletic. Um, I think all the articles are written by uh, Randy Mueller. And that is entitled the... Uh, each division, each division that he breaks down, he um, identify um, a concern, the biggest concern in that team, with each team in the divisions. So, so far he has, I've read a few of them as well. So, he's did the AFC South, NFC North, um, AFC North, NFC East, and AFC East. So, this article... I believe it came out on the 15th, so it's been out for a few days. And I just came across it yesterday. I read, logged into the um, Athletic. I am a member of the Athletic, a subscriber, and just going through the, you know, scamming through the articles, looking at the, the latest headlines, and I just came across this one and just kind of curious get to know, you know, what he had to say on the NFC South. And, you know, pretty much, you know, Talking about the Saints and the issues they may have. So I'm going to just take in a, I got a few quotes from that uh, article, a few screenshots on what uh, I highlight as, you know, the, I will say the, the points he was trying to drive off, drive home, drive home in that, uh, in the Saints portion of that story. So like I said, a little bit about, Mueller, he was the Saints general manager from 2000 to 2001. Uh, I believe Tom Benson fired him. They believe they had a conflict going on at the time. Seahawks general manager from 95 to 98. Former Dolphins general, general manager from 2005 to 2007. He has over 35 years of experience in the National Football League as a general manager. I believe it's a Scott some scouting um, experience as well. So it's very um familiar with how things go in the National Football League, how to look at player, evaluate players, how to build teams, and whether you like the way things went down in the walls or not. He has skins on the wall. And now he was, like I said, he was with the third third team. And previously that was that's the pre the third third team is um it's this website, uh, one of the, the newer sports media websites. That's uh, strictly on the National Football League, and it's a site that's comprised of, I would say, 80% of the staff is has former has prior NFL experience working as a, um, a scout, and general manager, or even former players. They got a lot of former players that players that contribute to that site as well. So he was over at the Dirty Thirty team. Now he's at the Athletic um, part of that staff that. Has um, Dan Brugler, Larry Holder, you know, former contributor of um, the time picking the times picking young. Now I over at the Athletic as well. So I just, you know, in the open the part of the article when he gets down to the Saints, he does has the Saints. The Saints winning the division. He spoke highly of the Saints and how the team has always been in, you know, win now mode. They, you know, the, he commend them on how they handled the, the Derek Carr, you know, slash Raiders situation, how 
they pretty much they pretty much play chess and not playing um checkers you know i'm just I'm paraphrasing here but he just spoke highly of the saints and what they have done in the past and what they continue to do now on how they evaluate players um you know build to the build to the draft you know evaluates certain needs during free agency um you know the way they play you know defense you know committed the the second the secondary has been uh built up and he was just saying you know how the team is you know heading head and shoulders above everyone else in the division you know and that's kind of contrary to what you know, I was, I'm starting to see a lot of, I've said this in the past, I'm starting to see a lot of, you know, national media analysts kind of swing their, I would say, I won't say swing, but have their opinions kind of shifted towards the Carolina Panthers and Bryce Young um, winning this division, you know. But he, um, Spoke highly of the Saints. Spoke highly of Mickey Loomis, you know, believes Derek Carr is the guy for the next, you know, three to four years to keep them in that win-now mode, that mode of where they can compete for a championship. You know, uh, bring back that, uh, I would say that Drew Brees-like, you know, vibe for this team where you win in – eight to nine game, eight to 10 games. And like going from October to November, those type of teams where you knew the Saints were ever going to have a shot. You knew in games, even, even, even if they were down by a significant deficit, a significant deficit, excuse me, that, you know, there was, you know, there was a chance that they were, they were going to come back. They can come back and win it. And that's what he was speaking of. in this all uh, article. So I'm going to go ahead and just talk about, you know, the, the excerpt where he kind of mentions the, his biggest concern for the Saints right now. All right. So he stated that his biggest word for this team is his perimeter weapons on offense. Chris Alave is the Saints most com- com- complete wide receiver, and he's a good player. But Michael Thomas is not the Michael Thomas of pre-pandemic times. The company line has been. That he's back and he's ready to, and ready to roll. I didn't see that last year, and I'm not sure we will this year. I also can't buy James Washington broken foot in 2022, and Brian Edwards three catches in 2020 in 2022, being the answers. Somehow, somehow the Saints have to come up with better options to give Carr a chance. End quote. All right, so you you notice in this excerpt, this quote right here that I have pulled up. Is that Mueller did not mention Rashid Shahid at all, at all in this uh, excerpt, right that I have pulled up. You know, he doesn't mention A. T. Perry, who, uh, based on the reports today, I believe he's on the uh, has a non-disclosed injury on the. Um, Start a training camp for rookies, if I'm not mistaken. So, it's interesting. But, Rashid Shahid, I guess to me, with him, you know, I guess you got to, with, with Mueller, you have to show him a lot more. He's not sold, I'm assuming, on um, Rashid Shahid as being that reliable option coming out of, or, you know, or operating out of the slot. You know, or maybe he's just not up to speed on it, but on him, but I think he should be. I just don't think he visions Rashid as a guy that can be a lot a reliable number two to Chris Olave. And he just I mean in, in regards to his stance on Michael Thomas, I believe, you know, it's fair. You know, is you know, you haven't seen it with Michael Thomas. You know, he hasn't been on the field, you know, dealing with injuries. You know, he got on the field last season at that one game where we thought he was coming back. You thought we thought he was getting the Michael Thomas of old. And then, you know, the next couple of games, 
know, the injuries, the foot and the foot injury came about. You know what I'm saying? Um, James Washington, who I, I, I mean, he's a more of a um, down the field type guy, but you know, he was out for most of the last season. Brian Edwards showed some promise with the Raiders. Couldn't really, you know, repeat that with the Atlanta Falcons or with the Kansas City Chiefs. Wasn't even there that long to even show anything. But, you know, I think to a certain extent, there's legitimate concerns. You know what I'm saying? And I don't really, outside, from the national perspective, on the, from the outside, outside of, you know, the Saints circles and, you know, people like that, I just, it's only a handful of people that I will, like, take their announce, but you know what listen to their analysis when it comes to the Saints. You know, Loomis, I mean not Loomis, but Mueller's uh take here it's kinda it's not bad. You know, I believe it's fair. But, you know he just not he needs to uh to me he needs to pay a little more attention to Rashid Shahid, man. Cause last year he was kinda like the the, the I would say the outside of Alave, the, the biggest, you know, lightning rod, bright spot, you know, on the team that gave people hope of what what, what could um, possibly be to come with his offense. You know, if, if people can, people can, players can stay healthy, you know what I'm saying? So he has some fair points in his, um, in his take, in his uh, article on the Saints, but he still believes this is a good football team. You know what I'm saying? But uh, to me, does the Saints have a, uh, can you, you know, have a lack of, do, do you thought, do I believe that the Saints lack uh, perimeter weapons on offense? I wouldn't say so right now. You know, I think if Michael Thomas can stay healthy, he doesn't have to, Michael Thomas doesn't have to revert back to 2019, Michael Thomas, where he was just unstoppable, unguardable. He just has, he just has to be a reliable, productive receiver for this team that can move the chains, you know, extend plays, and get and put up point help help uh, put up points, you know, help put up touchdowns. That's all he has to do, you know. He doesn't have to be, you know, like you know, like the excuse me, guy that. Caught ten to twelve passes, ten to twelve passes a game, and then for the Saints to win, because now unlike those years, you got somebody like a Chris Olave that can, you know, take some um some of that load off of Michael Thomas. You know, Rashid Shahid, according to what the reports say, is that he's going to be operating out of the slot. You know. And also, man, you got um. He didn't really mention the tight ends, though. He, you know, he didn't mention Jawan Johnson. You know, Foster Moreau. He didn't mention uh, Taysom Hill. You know what I'm saying? He didn't. I mean, I mean, is is Brian that was even going to make the team? You know what I'm saying? At Perry, who hopefully he can stay healthy. View him as a possible steal of the, steal of the draft. You know what I'm saying? So his uh, concerns, they're legitimate, but I just think that he's he needs to look at the whole, I mean, look at the whole team, the whole offense, offensive unit and the capabilities outside of um, Michael Thomas and the, the, the guys that he named on his uh, list, Brian Nevels and James Washington. Is, is James Washington going to make the team? You know, that's another question I got from Mueller. All right, so he continues it up by saying, running back Alvin Kamar selling his case, and now just waiting for the NFL response is a good thing. Of course, I might lose some sleep while waiting for that ruling to come down. Anytime Miss will be added by signing a former Packers and Lions running back Jamal Williams. I think the ball will always come out quickly in Pete Carmichael's offense. In a Pete Carmichael offense, excuse me. And Carl will make sure of this. Carl will face less pass rush pressure here and then any of his Raider days. Raider days. But the Saints have to find the Saints have to find a way to score without driving the ball for ten plays. 
a lack of speed and perimeter playmaking and a recurring is a recurring night nightmare if I'm a Saints decision maker. But I do think they're the class of this division. End quote. So, like I said, he believes the Saints are the best team in this division. He's just kind of unsure of the playmakers on the perimeter. Now, when he say lack speed, that they lack the lack of speed on the perimeter, I'm just kind of like, kind of taken back by that. Because, like I said, what about Rashid Shaheed? You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, Brian Edwards, he's not a burner. A.T. Perry is not really a burner. It's more these guys are more of possession type receivers. Um, you know, the guy that got from Dallas last season, he is the the big play guy. You know, but um, we'll see how it play out, man. Now, with that being said, now this comes now I'm bring this up, bring this up as well. What about going out there and acquiring Devontae Adams. Cause that's kind of been a rumor that's been kind of, you know, on and off, you know, ever since um I would say Devontae Adams made that comment that he made a while back about the quarterback position now that Carr is gone. You know. You know what I'm saying? If the Saints are gonna have to give up something, a lot for that, you know what I'm saying, to happen. You know, and that could possibly hurt this team down the road. Because if I'm the Raiders, I'm asking for a player and maybe a draft pick for this to, for this to happen. Because you get Devonta Adams on uh, Devonta Adams on this team, and it just transformed this offense. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think it's gonna happen. Though. I don't think Devonta 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 Adams will end up uh, a New Orleans Saint. If he does ask for a trade, I think another team will be in the rest. I don't think the Saints are going to give up some assets to make this happen. It depends. You know, it depends on how Michael Thomas, has pro- his progress will be once he comes back, he gets inserted back into the offense. You know, Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid, the running game, you know, they're not time he's out, man. It's going to it's gonna really, it's gonna really show what his offense is about when Alvin Kamara is out for those, um, for those suspended games. You know what I'm saying? So while these are legit, I just think these are legit concerns. I just think that uh, Mueller just kind of needs to pay more attention to what, or just needs, needs, needs to look more into what. Guys like Rashid Shaheed can do as a playmaker. And, I mean, rightfully so, you have to be a little bit concerned about Alvin Kamara. Not Alvin Kamara, but uh, Michael Thomas. You know what I'm saying? Got to be. Because, like I said, he hasn't been on the field for a significant portion of the season the last three seasons. Three seasons, you know, 2021. 20, well, 2020 it started. 2021, you didn't see any time. 2022, was a guy on the field for a little bit. And then went right back off the field with an injury. You know? And another thing is, um, it's just sometimes people that have, you know, been in certain, you know, former general managers, scouts, executives, they could see a lot more compared to a uh, the untrained eye, you know what I'm saying. I'm not I'm not knocking nobody that you know covers covers the sand. So that's the sand handlers out there. You know, a lot of people that do some great things. I'm not talking about anybody like that. Not putting nobody down. But sometimes, man, it's just better. Some people that's outside the organization got experience working with building NFL teams, scouting players. Scouting rosters, breaking down rosters. They see things differently sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And Mueller could be could be completely wrong on this. You know what I'm saying? But I do believe that it's it's somewhat a, a, a legitimate concern. You know, your perimeter speed. 
And we just got to wait and see how this play out. How to see that. Uh, wait and see how this identity of this team is going to be made up once the, the, the ball the ball get rolling in September against the Tennessee Titans. You know, so we'll see. All right, so this is how Mueller sees the NFC South playing out. It's kind of interesting to me because he has the Saints as the division winner. Second place, he has Tampa Bay. And third place, the Carolina Carolina Panthers. And fourth place, the Atlanta Falcons. He does not believe the Falcons are going to be good this year. And he thinks that, you know, that that the Falcons just have, have a tight end. A possession receiver. They, they, they lack the speed on the outside to really scare teams. Um, Carolina, he was just saying that, um, you know, they have Bryce Young and all that, but they don't have the receivers, you know, on the outside to make, you know, really, you know, enhance his, you know, to not enhance, but to bring out his playmaking ability as a quarterback, ability as a quarterback, you know. Um, and he also has some issues with their questions about their offensive line and their ability to protect them. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, there's people on the outside think Carolina's going to win the division. Some people think Atlanta, Atlanta's the best team in the division. And to see to say that he has Tampa Bay at second place is kind of interesting. But the write-up on him, he has a, a interesting, you know, take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and he still believes that defense is going to really, you know, bail him out of a few games this season. But second place, you know, so and he has questions about that quarterback position, but that may not be enough. Second place, second place in the NFC South may not get you in the playoffs. Even if you have, a, you may have a winning, a winning, a winning record, it may not get you in the playoffs. It's definitely going to win you the division title. You know. So, interested um segment by Mueller on breaking down the Saints and their what he believes he deems the biggest concern right now is the lack of perimeter, lack of weapons on the outside on the perimeter. But we'll see, man. The Saints got you know 14 million in a reported 14 million in cap space. Let's see what they do. Um, you know, any there's not. I've looked at the list. I gotta go back and check on it, check it again. But uh, the best, the, the remaining best free agents out there. There's not really a really a really good pass catcher out there that you can like bring in and expect to contribute. You like you know like a, well, I won't say contribute alongside Chris Olave and half reliable production. You know, you got T.Y. Hilton on there, but at this day, at this point in his career, what's the point? You know, Jarvis Landry's out there, but we tried that before. So, I mean, I think he would come in if uh, somebody like Michael Thomas had to miss time uh, again or one of the other guys missed time. But I think, you know, Dennis Allen and Loomis are going to roll with what they have right now at receiver. I think that um that fourteen million may get used when used for signing an edge rusher or maybe looking at a linebacker or something like that or trading for somebody else. Not not a wide receiver, but I think it's gonna get used on the uh, defensive side of the football. So we'll see though. All right, so I'll have you off right now, man. Give me a like, comment, subscribe to the channel, let me know how you feel. Do you feel as though the lack of playmaking options on the perimeter on the outside? Is the Saints' biggest uh, issue right now. Also, check out SaintsDiscussions.com for latest content on Saints organization. This video will be reposted, repositioned on the website along with a video transcript. So that if you decide not to listen to the video, you can read the um, transcript. It, it will explain everything that I'm talking about in today's content. Have a blessed night. Peace. Be safe. I'm out. Who that?